Hi, my name is Jared, and today I'm going to be reviewing 69 Love Songs by The Magnetic Fields. As the name implies, this album consists of 69 love songs running over the course of three discs. I like to think that this record is one of the greatest achievements of underground pop, as this album gives the listener an experience unlike anything else I've heard. The Magnetic Fields was formed in Boston by frontman Stephen Merritt, who would do most of the songwriting and singing throughout the band's entire career. Along with Merritt, high school friend Claudia Gonson and cellist Sam Duvall helped to produce the band's first few albums throughout the early 90s. The band's early releases drew inspiration from genres like synth-pop and indie rock, and acts like the Young Marble Giants and Phil Spector. Their early work is very unassuming, nothing too boundary-pushing or unique, maybe some uncommon instrumentation here and there, but nothing super out there. Hints of experimentation began popping up during their third studio album, The Charm of the Highway Strip, which was the band's first attempt at a concept album and features long, droney synth chords over top of Merritt's singing and country-inspired guitar, making the listener feel claustrophobic as all these layers of sound are stacked on top of each other. Their next release, 1994's Holiday, truly embraced the unconventionalism that was hinted at on Highway Strip. It takes the droning synth that was in the background on Highway Strip and brings it to the forefront, sounding like a synth pop mix with indie. Merritt's songwriting ability is also greatly improved on this record, mostly singing about love. This sentiment was only expanded upon on the band's follow-up record, Get Lost, a year later, along with the introduction of guitarist John Woo to the band. Around the time Get Lost came out, Stephen Merritt began branching out to various other side projects, such as The Sixth, The Gothic Archies, and The Future Bible Heroes all of whom released at least one album between the release of Get Lost and 69 Love Songs. After releasing Get Lost, Merritt wanted to make something bigger. 69 Love Songs originally started out as a theatrical review that Merritt began fantasizing about as he hung out around bars in New York. The original plan was to have 100 songs, partially inspired by Charles Ives' 114 songs, but Merritt thought that would be too much work, so he settled on 69. Merritt himself has said that 69 Love Songs is not an album about love. It's an album about the side effects of love, the hardships. The opening of the whole album, Absolutely Cuckoo, is a perfect summation of this. The song details the story of a man warning his love interest about their psychopathic tendencies all over this beautiful and unexpected ukulele instrumental. This was a running theme throughout the album, a cutesy and otherwise benign instrumental played over top of dark lyrics. Other examples would include I Don't Want to Get Over You, which includes a line about considering suicide after the narrator's partner leaves them. A Long Forgotten Fairy Tale, which is about running into an abusive ex, and Xylophone Track, which details a man's the last thoughts as he commits suicide by getting hit by a train. Of course, on the surface, all the tracks seem to check all the boxes of a love song, lyrics about love, catchy choruses, simple instrumentation, but when you dive deeper into the songs, the lyrics aren't as one-dimensional as they seem. Just from reading the lyrics, you'd expect the record to be somber, maybe a bit folksy, but no. Every song on here, with the exception of a few, are incredibly upbeat and catchy. The bouncy synth and simplistic but meaningful lyrics create a fun and easy to digest atmosphere, while not saying too simplistic. And the amount of variety on this album is truly unbelievable. While this album mainly deals in indie pop, it combines and intertwines so many other genres, from synth pop, country, punk, shoegaze, blues, jazz, experimental, to even renaissance era concertos. The band used over 60 instruments on this record, which I think shows how much effort and soul they put into the project. And the sheer variety of instrumentation helps to keep every track fresh and prevent repetitiveness, which they succeeded in with flying colors. While the band usually sticks to their basic guitar and synth lineup, on occasion you will hear a deviation from their standard instrumentation. Like the harpsichord on For We Are the King of the Boudoir, the theremin on Blue You, or the sharp violin on I Shattered. Some instruments make multiple appearances, like the ukulele on some of the more twee songs, and the accordion that makes its way onto more of the romantic tracks. And of course, since both Merritt and Gonson are both gay, it's no surprise that there's a lot of queer representation on this album. Underwear, acoustic guitar, When My Boy Walks Down the Street, and Papa Was a Rodeo all contain explicitly gay relationships. And most of the other tracks avoid using third-person pronouns so the listener can fill in the gaps as they see fit. And there are too many other tracks to touch on, so I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. My Only Friend is a genuinely heartbreaking piano ballad of Merritt crooning over Billie Holiday's music, hoping to live vicariously through it. Wene We Bernie of Me Beget is a comedic song sung in an over-the-top Scottish accent with progressively more and more outlandish metaphors. I'm Crazy For You But Not That Crazy takes a comedic look at a stalker trying to convince both himself and his victim that he's perfectly justified in doing what he's doing. 
The death of Ferdinand de Socher delves into the topics of semiotics and the philosophy of language that his titular figure is known for. Abigail Bell of Kilronan is Merritt's twist on an old Irish war song that he wrote on vacation to Costa Rica with his Irish boyfriend. And of course, there are so many other amazing tracks on this record, but there's only so much I can say before it gets boring. So just take my word on it when I say this is one of the best albums I've ever listened to, and I'm going to give 69 Love Songs a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.